Welcome to 23rd lecture on probability and statistics. In this lecture, we'll study calculating probabilities using simple events. In our last lecture, we studied the simple event is the single output or the output of an experiment output obtained from the single repetition of an experiment. For example, for a dice roll, the list of simple events is from 1 to 6, E1, E2, up to A6. And for our coin, the list of simple events is head and heads, is head and tails, or 0 or 1. For relative frequency, is frequency of a certain event divided by n. Right, the frequency means the number of times the event occurs is frequency. We studied frequency and relative frequencies in chapter number one. Right, so number of repetitions is n. So number of times the experiment was was repeated in numerator, in denominator and in numerator, the frequency or the number of times a certain event occurred. For example, for example, if we roll a die and we want to know the frequency of the number of times I got one on the die. So if I, for example, if I roll a die, maybe for example, 100 times and I get and I get a one 10 times, the relative frequency of 10 would be 10 times that I get the number one divided by the total number of times I rolled the die. 10 over 100, that would be the frequency over N, relative frequency. So frequency is the number of times a certain event occurred, for example, a one on a die rolled. And then N is the number of times we repeated the experiment that can be 100, 200, or as many times as we want. So based on this relative frequency term that we now understand, we can define probability of an event A, and that we define as the limit as n approaches infinity. So we have repeated the experiment for a fairly large number of times. Then the frequency of event A divided by the number of times we have repeated the experiment. For example, for a coin toss, if we toss the coin for infinitely large number of times, so the number of times we get a head divided by the total number of times we toss the coin would be the frequency would be would be the probability of getting a head. So this is very important. We have to we have to toss it or we have to repeat the experiment for a very large number of times. And probability of course would be of any event would be between zero and one. So basically we are going to solve an example based on relative frequency of a die roll. And we know that for a die roll, the list of simple events is one to six, E1, E2, E3. We studied in last lecture from E1 to E6. So rolling a balanced die, this means that the chance of every number to appear is the same. The two has the same chance as three, the same as five, the same as one and so on. So the probability of getting a one would be the number of times we get a one divided by the total number of times we roll the dice. So that should be that should come out to be one over six if we roll this die for infinitely large number of times. That should be one over six if the die is balanced and we repeat the experiment for a very large number of times. So probability of simple events is between zero and one. It is always the case and the sum of the probabilities of all simple events is one. For example, for a die roll, this is one over six for every number to appear 1 over 6 for 1, 1 over 6 for number 2, 1 over 6 for number 3, going on finally 1 over 6 for number 6. So if we add 1 over 6 6 times, it comes out to be how much? 1, 1. And for a, on for a coin toss, this is, if it is a fair coin, this is 1 by 2 for head, 1 by 2 for, for tail. If we add all the probabilities of simple events, they come out to be one, right? So there will always be one for simple events. Simple event is an event uh, that is the outcome of a single repetition of the basic experiment. So EI, I have written I here. This I means the ith simple event. 
that is one of the six simple events that we have studied in case of a die or one of the two simple events that occur in case of a coin toss. So total number of simple events is, is the sample space. We have already studied that, that S is the total, is the space containing all sample, all simple events. So S, so if we, if we add the probability of simple events, all simple events present in the sample space, your answer would be one like this, like we have studied in case of a die roll and in case of a coin toss. So if it was two coins simultaneously or one after another, it depends on you, simultaneously or serially. Serially means that we, if that we, that we toss one coin first and then the second or simultaneously, we want to find out, we will, we will be having this set of simple events. If we toss coin one, we get either a head or a tail. Suppose we get a head on the first coin, then, and then we toss coin two, we have two coins, this coin and this coin. So the outcome is, for example, head, and then we coin toss two, then we toss coin two, the outcome would be head or tail. And if on coin one, we have a tail, and we then coin, the toss coin number two, this is head or tail. This can be head or tail. So we have four, we have four different options. Head on first, head on second, head on first, tail on second, tail on first, head on second, tail on first, tail on second. So H H H T T H T T. Let's assign them numbers. Uh, the probabilities. Assign them. Let's assign them the name of events E1 to E4. So E. We use the letter E for simple events. In our last lecture, we used it for simple events. So we have four simple events here. So probability of E1 would be, of course, one over four, because, because the probability of every, because the probability of each of these four simple events is the same. So the same chance of getting E1, E2, E3, or E4. So this is one over four for everything. For E1, for E2, E3, and E4, this is 1 over 4. And if we add this, all this, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus, so it comes out to be 1, like we studied before. That for single events, the probability of single event is between 0 and 1. It is always the case. And the sum of the probabilities of all simple events in the, sam in the, in the sample space, it gives us a 1. So it will give you a 1, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, so 1. So if we define uh, another event that is not simple event, it's an event, we studied event that, it, that can be, that can compose of more, uh, one or more than one simple events. Probability of having exactly one head. Probability of having exactly one head. Let's go and go through these simple events. Exactly one head. We have two heads here. We here we have exactly one head. Here we have exactly one head and here we don't have any head. So the probability of simple event two plus the probability of simple event three would give you the probability of having exactly one head. So two and three added gives us one by two. And uh, example number two is that suppose we have a bin where we have two red balls and one yellow ball. So, and we, and we draw two balls serially. Serially. Serially means that if we draw a first ball and it comes out to be R1 and the second ball, then second ball could be R2 or shallow. It cannot be R1 again because we have already drawn R1. So this means serially without replacement. This is called, this is what we call without replacement. We don't replace the ball. We first draw it, then we don't replace and then we draw the second ball. So we pick two candies. Oh, they're not balls, they're candies. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Balls or candies, so probability of both balls or both candies are red. So first we draw a tree that suppose we get the first ball and it, it comes out to be red. It can be any, it can be R2 or yellow, but suppose it is R1 and second ball can be R2 or yellow. If the first ball is R2, the second can be R1 or yellow. And if it is yellow, the first is yellow, the second can be R1 or R2. So we have the list of simple events as 
R1, R2, first red, second red, first red, second yellow. R1 yellow, R1, R2, R1. This is actually R2, R1, R2, R1. So this is two, this is one, doesn't matter. R2 yellow, Y, R1, Y, R2. So we have six simple events. So the probability of every, each of these is one by six. So probability of both are red. Now we are in a really good position to find out this probability. They both are red. Red R1, R2, R2, R1. It's actually R2, R1, R2, R1. So they both are red. So now we have both red. They both red. R2, R1. R1, R2. So these are the two possibilities out of these six simple events. There are only two simple events, E3 and E1, where we have both red balls. Otherwise, we have the combinations of red or yellow. So the probability of both red is E1 plus probability of E1 plus probability of E3. And what is the probability of both yellow? Oh, it cannot be. It would be zero because we don't have any simple event where we have both yellow because it is only one yellow ball. And what would be the probability of one red and one yellow? What would be the probability of of one red, one red, and and one yellow? What can be that probability? One red and one yellow. Right, let's see which of these six events have fulfilled this criteria. One, one red and one yellow. One red and yellow, one yellow, one red. No matter it's R1, R2, it should be red. Red, yellow, red, yellow. These are one, two, three, four. So this is, this would be one by six plus one by six. Plus one by six. Plus the last one by six. So it comes out to be four by six or two by three. So two by three is the probability of having one red and one yellow ball, no matter it is it, either it is R1 or R2. So getting one red and one yellow, the probability is two by three. So we will keep on studying more about probability in our upcoming lectures. Thank you.